Here's your host, Alex Garrett. Oh, man, tomorrow I got a great story that I found in the Newark Star-Ledger about the FAA not holding its pilots accountable. We'll talk about that tomorrow. But tonight, I know it's a day after Labor Day, but I always think on these holiday weeks, it's Labor Day week. So, my few cents on Labor Day week is that (laughs) where's the ultimate concern for the many labor disputes going on. Everybody's talking about the United Auto Workers and the SAG-AFTRA, but it seems to me this entire year has been about making hard workers pay, um, making it uh, happen. Making pay increases happen. Nurses were going on strike across hospitals across the tri-state area. I said because of the great care of the neonatal unit, pay the nurses. Finally, contracts were agreed upon. But that was a strike and a crisis number one. Then you saw footage of Delta or American Airlines pilots fighting for more money and uh, in Grand Central. I believe they were lining up the steps. So that was dispute two. Now in now in a hundred plus days yeah I said it a hundred plus days uh the SAG AFTRA continues. We talked with Kenyatta Simpson about the picket line and we have to get him on or get a rep on to discuss what's going on with all that. Because it doesn't seem like there's any progress or leeway being made at all. At all. I guess they'll have a fall season. I don't know how much of a fall season. But the idea that AI is going to take over roles in Hollywood, who would want that? Wouldn't we want human nature, creativity, So that's uh, another labor dispute. And then you have the United Auto Workers. Another continued disaster. And, you know, I know I reference 970 a lot, but, but, Piscopo today, Joe Piscopo, talk about why didn't the Biden administration step in to any of these things and resolve it so that strikes could be resolved. And it just feels like an unprecedented Labor Day. That's what I'm coming to the microwave to tell, microwave, microphone to tell you. It seems like an unprecedented Labor Day because of the disputes going on. And let me tell you, during these negotiations or lack of, please, even when these strikes and strike threats hit the local bus drivers and the local subway people and local MTA uh, conductors and workers, don't get frustrated at the hardworking people. Get frustrated with the union bosses that can tend to be really, you know, I hate to say greedy, but greedy. But don't get pissed off at the union worker just trying to make a living for his or or her own family. Pay dues, by the way. Pay dues, by the way. And then, not only that, not only that, still put up with the consumer BS on top of it all every day at work. I I meant to tell you this, but if you're riding the Long Island Railroad, do not get frustrated with the people that are taking your ticket if you didn't read the fare increase correctly or you didn't read the train schedule increase correctly. That's on you. 
That's not on them. And if you have a problem with the raised fares, don't blame it on the col the hardworking ticket collector that's just trying to make it his or her, her own living. Take it up with management. They made the decision. Not the hard worker just trying to make the daily runs uh, even in the trucking world. Right, Zach Miller? Don't put it on the blue collar worker and then my other thought about whether we should support unionization or if it's too communistic socialistic whatever you want to call it um unions have a purpose here in America Unions, when run properly, like Teamsters Local 237 with Greg Floyd, make a difference. I'm going to attach to you a link of a conversation I had with Greg about how he made a difference with Governor Kathy Hochul on NYCHA. There are leaders, there are union leaders that are not boss tweed to the world, but are regular, hardworking, on-the-ground presidents of these Teamster unions, of unions that get it, that get what the worker's going through, but also know how to navigate with the employer. David Cohn, I think about this because I, I think of that Yankeeography where he talked about navigating the player strike in 1994, trying to get the best deal, but being diplomatic. So no, labor unions, the idea of a union is not communistic, it's not socialistic, unfortunately, but because those that work in these unions, those that are in these unions, are hard workers actually contributing to a capitalistic society. Let me say it again, because I think I was clear the first time. And I might post this all over social media, because here's my point. Hard-working union members contribute to the capitalistic society that say no to unionizations, that try and stiff-arm unionization prospects. Right, Jeff Bezos? Right? You don't like when your Amazon warehouse starts unionizing... Because it makes you look terrible. Also, it makes you accountable. And at the end of the day, isn't that what labor unions do and are supposed to do? Is hold the employer accountable for proper working conditions? For the hardworking men and women that want to make a paycheck, that want to make a living, bring a paycheck home? They contribute to the capitalistic society by working hard. So you should embrace them, not shut them down when they're saying, hey, conditions need to change. Those billionaire executives that are so upset, oh my God, sales pitches are being missed with the late night talk show hosts. Well, you know what? You know what? That writer making the talk show host is actually helping you make money. So maybe you shouldn't think of it as an evil thing to negotiate and work with SAG-AFTRA. Because by the way, when you shut down their production by not negotiating, you also shut down your revenue stream based on the actual streaming because, hey, you don't have a product to sell. So in multiple ways, you're screwing yourselves over, us, uh, billionaire Hollywood execs, when you don't negotiate with SAG-AFTRA. How are you screwing yourself? Well, because you're not getting the money um, that these hardworking writers help you make. The brilliance starts on the ground level. 
And, of course, Stephen Colbert is a brilliant writer. He started his career as a writer. He is a writer. But he and Fallon and Kimmel and uh, Seth Meyers all have writers. And guess what? You get to sell that brand of Stephen Colbert. You get to sell that brand of Seth Meyer. You get to sell that brand of Jimmy Kimmel because of that writer in the back room making his jokes even funnier than just the delivery. So, in my eyes, it, it was a peaceful Labor Day in a sense. Kind of relaxed. But I couldn't help but think... How many disputes have we had? How many disputes have we had in this year alone? And where's the intervention? Blue collar Biden, where's the intervention for the hardworking writers? I agree with Joe Piscopo on that. Uh, Blue collar Joe Biden. You should be in a position where you can help Make a deal for the union auto workers who've been striking for a long time now. Instead of trashing your opponent or possible 2024 opponent in in Pennsylvania, you could be there saying, hey, I'm going to work with you to make a deal happen. You're the president of the damn United States. Can't you make a deal possible? You're the damn president of the United States. And instead of using that stump speech to bash your opponent, they wanted to hear, I'm sure, hey, union guys, we get you. We know you. We're we're the Blue Dog Democrats, right? That's what they call themselves. We get you. We support you. So we're going to help you make a deal. But no, it was all about bashing Trump. What a missed opportunity. And then, and then, for those that are um, union leaders, playing hardball is not always the easiest thing to do. Fighting for the worker is not always the easiest thing to do. But you know when I lose respect for you? When you tell your union members, vote a certain way or you can't be part of a union. Or we're going to make it more difficult for you. Maybe raise the dues. Stiff army into voting the way we want you to. That's a corrupt union leader. That's not how you get it done. If you want to truly fight for the worker, don't stiff arm them into something they're not comfortable doing. They're paying you dues, for God's sakes. They're paying to be part of your union. Don't uh, disenfranchise them. Just because they may think different. And the one other stigma about unions, I feel, is out there, is the corruption. And the corruption does not help the consumer, the unionized worker, and the employer that hires that worker and that the worker strikes against. Corruption doesn't help anything. And weeding it out might be a a good thing also. But if you want to do it right, you negotiate well, and we have to end these disputes. For the good of the worker, for the good of the economy, and the good of the consumer. And I'm very surprised 
that on Labor Day, no one really talked about how the many disputes there has been. Albeit some have been resolved. But can't we just have a cordial, cordial respect and realize that the unionized worker or that the worker in general builds into the capitalist economy and is not communist for wanting to so to unionize for fair workers rights cuz at the end of the day all the strike does is hurt everybody all the dispute does is hurt the whole thing it stops progress from moving forward and this progressive administration these progressive politicians have you seen one of them say let's end this freaking sag after strike no I haven't have you there's your problem right there someone needs to step in and mediate to end the remaining disputes And maybe put egos aside and power aside and realize that this Labor Day 2023, this Labor Day 2023, a unionized worker is good for the employer. Because it means he'll be he or she will be happier, maybe. And it's good for the economy. Cause that unionized worker will be inspired to put back and pay and that hard work will go back into paying into that capitalistic system. Which for Wall Street is the end of the is the is the end goal, right? Keep the capitalism going. Well, a unionized worker does that best, I feel. So let's not crap on them any more than that average consumer who doesn't know the life of that worker just trying to make a day's living. Let's be the better person and end these disputes this Labor Day week, 2023. Have a great day.